What's up Divine Mommies? Welcome to my channel. I am Crystal Divine Queen and this is my Indigenous Lifestyle Vlogs. I help Black mothers and Black women to create the birth experience that they truly desire and support them during their afterbirth postpartum adventures. I do this by providing doula services and tangible resources such as this YouTube channel along with ebooks, blogs, and packages from my website, My Indigenous Lifestyle. Com. I also provide affirmations and tips on my Instagram page too. But enough about me. Today I want to share with you what all goes into a home birth. With everything that is going on right now in the hospitals, with this coronavirus and COVID-19, more and more moms are feeling like they would rather have a home birth or even give birth at a birthing center, but more moms are considering avoiding hospitals. And I think more black moms are definitely considering because the black mortality rate was already high. And if you're going to have birth in a hospital and they're limiting the amount of support that you can bring with you to help you advocate for yourself, you know, that is very alarming. So I get it. And I wanted to put together a video just to let you know Know what all goes into a home birth okay I got the five things that you need to do to prepare yourself for a home birth experience home births are great for natural birth experiences majority of the time that a woman chooses to have a home birth she's choosing to have a natural birth experience so I think that's an important thing to consider if you want to have a home birth experience that you are opting to have a natural birth experience but there's a lot of benefits for home birth when you home birth you're able to deliver in any position that you want to there's less chance of an infection there's no chance of separation from mom and baby and probably one of the biggest benefits is that you're in control of your environment you're able to create a peaceful relaxed and comfortable environment to give birth in once you've made the decision that you don't want to have a hospital birth or you don't even want to go to a birthing center you want to have a home birth the first thing that you're probably wondering is okay how do I do it the first thing you're gonna to have to do is choose a midwife and choose a midwife very carefully okay there are different types of midwives they vary in qualifications experiences and even certification you also want to be mindful of legalities from state to state with midwives too so it's very very important that you choose carefully and you do this by giving a midwife a very thorough interview I found a really good website that has a list of questions that you can ask your midwife and I'm not going to go through and name all the questions but I am going to put the link in the description box below okay so these are questions that you would ask during the interview process for choosing a midwife it's very important to establish a connection when you are choosing a midwife you are going to be doing very intimate work with your midwife and you're going to be in your home at that so yes you do want to interview your midwife and you want to choose wisely. The two types of midwives is a CPM and a CNM, okay? A CNM is a certified nurse midwife. And in simple terms, she basically starts out as a registered nurse first. Then she goes through additional training in midwifery to become a certified nurse midwife. A CPM is a certified professional midwife. These midwives typically start out as doulas first and then take on additional training to become a midwife. The difference between the two is that one has a nursing degree um, and the other one does not. But a certified nurse midwife may lean more towards a medicalized birth experience. So it's very important to make sure you know what type of midwife you have interview her very thoroughly and choose wisely okay so that's the first thing the second thing you need to do is to take some type of birth preparation class though it is a natural function of the female body to give birth there's a whole lot more that comes along with it and you do want to be prepared and you want to know what to expect 
especially if you're having a home birth environment. Remember, you're in control of your birth experience when you are having it at home. And if you don't know things to look for or things to expect, um, if you haven't thoroughly interviewed your midwife and they're taking over your birth experience, this can wind up for your home birth not to turn out the way you probably envisioned it to. And the number one thing you want to do with a home birth is uh, avoid the chances of having to transfer to a hospital. So birth preparation class can help you be more prepared and know what to expect during labor, especially if this is your first time having a baby. And it can also help prepare dads. Dads don't have instincts from a little baby growing inside of their body. So birth preparation classes can also help him be more prepared and more knowledgeable about things to do and ways that he can help so that mom doesn't feel like she is resentful towards dad after everything is said and done and dad's not standing there in the corner feeling useless and helpless. Also, the most challenging aspect of labor is mom's ability to relax and a birth preparation class can definitely help out with relaxation techniques. It is also beneficial to take a birth preparation class because you want to familiarize yourself with the hospital systems even though you're planning on not having a transfer. In the worst case scenario, you want to at least know what to expect if that does occur because it can be a very traumatic experience if you're transferred to a hospital and then all of these things are being thrown at you and you're overwhelmed because you didn't know what to expect. So that's the second thing. Now, moving on to the third thing. The third thing that you need to do in order to prepare yourselves for a successful home birth experience is you need to prepare your home. You need to prepare your home and a lot goes into that. A really, really big tip is that you want to either purchase meals um, that are already pre-made or prepare and store your own meals in the freezer. Using dishes and pans and containers that are disposable will definitely help you once baby is here because you're not gonna have a lot of time to clean up a big mess after a big meal. So that's a really, really, really big tip that goes unnoticed. You wanna make sure you have a clean bathroom. You never know, you might end up in the bathtub when it's all said and done if you don't have an inflatable pool. You wanna make sure that you have clean sheets and you wanna make sure that your midwife's phone number is somewhere easily accessible. Then you need to focus on your birth kit, okay? So I'm gonna go over what your birth kit would include if you're having a home birth, but you're going to plan on giving birth in the bed. So you'll need two disposable shower curtains and two sets of sheets, fitted sheets. This is going to be your waterproof barrier on your bed. And you're going to put it on your bed as curtain, sheet, curtain, sheet, okay? The first layer, the sheet and the curtain, is for when you give birth and when it's all said and done, you can just take those two layers off and you'll have another layer that you can keep on the bed for your first few days of postpartum. So that's a really good trick. You're also going to need two large trash bags. It's gonna get really messy. Fresh paper towel, hydrogen peroxide. It's very, very good for cleaning up blood. You could even get some extra puppy pads and definitely, definitely lots of washcloths. I would say at least 10 washcloths, okay? Then you wanna also have a crock pot. The crock pot is what you're going to use to keep the towels warm. You're also gonna wanna have swaddle blankets, just like when you go to the hospital and they have a whole bunch of little baby blankets for you. You wanna have about 10 swaddle blankets and a heating pad. You're gonna use the heating pad to keep the swaddle blankets warm for baby. A flashlight, a large bowl for your placenta, especially if you're gonna have a lotus birth, you're gonna want a nice large wooden bowl to keep the placenta in along with the herbs that you're gonna put on top of that. If you don't know about lotus birth, once it's all said and done and the maintenance and the care for that, if you would like for me to make a video, go ahead and drop in the comment section below. I'll definitely make a video going into more detail about placenta care during a lotus birth. If you're not going to, then you want to have some large Ziploc bags to put the placenta in. And last but not least, a birthing ball, okay? That is going to do wonders. 
getting through labor and your contractions. Now, if you're gonna have a water birth, these are the type of things that will be in your birth kit. An inflatable pool, a disposable pool liner, a floating thermometer, a hose, a faucet adapter for the hose, an electric inflator or deflator, that's going to save a lot of time, a water removal pump, and extra towels for the floor. Some people like to get the plastic tarp to put on the floor, but some moms find that annoying people walking back and forth on the tarp when she's going through labor and having contractions and things. So that's why I suggest towel. And the last thing you want to have is a bucket near by in case you have to vomit you do not want to vomit obviously in your inflatable pool so that is how you basically prepare your home of course you do other little things too like set the mood get your incense your candles your essential oils music that you want to play dim the lights all those little things as well but those are more catered to your personal preferences so I didn't include those in my birth kits let's move on to number four the fourth thing you need to do is you need to take your prenatal care very seriously nutrition and exercise has a really really big impact on the comfort and the pain management of your labor do not forget that it is called labor for a reason it is work and you're having a home birth experience you it you want to be that much more in shape than you would be if you were going into the hospital when you decide to have a home birth you are responsible for having or maintaining a healthy body and staying low risk a lot of women who choose to have a home birth um, may even go so far as to take a free birthing route on your own you can check your urine measure your uterus you can weigh yourself you can examine your nutrition and your exercise you can even purchase a doppler to listen to the baby's heartbeat and you could only go to a medical provider for blood samples if you felt the need to be so these are options but whatever you choose to do for your prenatal care you need to take it seriously and you need to understand that it is up to you to prepare yourself your body for labor the work that you are going to be doing at home so if you choose to have a home birth with a midwife but you still see your midwife for prenatal care whatever you and your midwife discuss are things that you need to do to maintain your health and to stay low risk take it very very seriously the last thing you want to do is have to transfer to a hospital in the middle of your labor and the last thing you need to do is hire a doula yes hire a doula okay doulas are a very very good asset to have during birth experiences especially home birth experiences this is the environment that we shine in we're also spending time with you during your pregnancy and even postpartum so those are great benefits to having a doula around as well your midwife is going to handle everything on the medical aspect of childbirth but your doula is going to support you holistically emotionally mentally and even physically in a sense your doula is going to provide you with 24 7 continuous support unbiased and evidence-based information about birth she's going to be nourishing not only to you but to everyone involved in your birth she's going to help take a lot of pressure off of dad and the statistics just support doula care so make sure that you hire a doula if you plan on having a home birth so not a real long video i hope that this gives you some type of insight or a place to begin if you are considering having a home birth experience now you know a little bit more about what it takes to make that come true i do want to say that if a midwife or a doula is not an option for you and you still want to have a home birth experience especially with the state that hospitals are operating in right now do not feel stuck okay i encourage you to check out my video about free birthing my free birthing video is solely just to give you more insight on that type of birthing style 
I believe that we should be educated about our options because when we know better, we do better. And no one wants to have a traumatic birth experience. And we can prevent that by just properly educating ourselves. So, with that being said, I want to thank you guys for tuning in to another one of my videos. Please do not forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you're commenting, let me know if you would like a video on the lotus birth postpartum care of your placenta or anything else that you would like for me to create a video on. Just drop it in the comments below and I'll get to work on it. Until next time, Divine Mommies, peace.